These are the best of times and these are the worst of times. We're here to instruct, we're here to grow, we're here to learn, we're here to get the best we possibly can. Serious, life is serious. The future is serious. The best of times and the worst of times. That's called serious matter. How come such a difference from those who can reach such incredible heights and those who haven't yet found the answers for their life and their health and their future? We just have to ponder that and let that give us a note of seriousness, a note of seriousness. It's serious whether you win or lose. It's serious whether you succeed or fail. It's serious whether you've got a good future carved out for yourself or you do not have. Here's how to really cash in on this year. Number one, get serious. Life is serious. We call it life or death. Somebody asked me one time if I had a good description of life. I said, yes, I think I've got a good one. Life is the struggle to keep death at a respectable distance. <laughs> right? Death seems to want to move in prematurely, prematurely. If you want to live a good, long, flourishing life, you've got to push back. You can't just give in. You've got to push back. That's what these products are for, to help you push back. And we're dealing with some serious matters here. So we can't just, you know, tell the latest 10 jokes and just go home. We're not here to entertain. Next, to make this your best year ever, have a piece of the 400 million, see what you can do, touch the lives of as many people as you can possibly touch. Number one was get serious. Here's number two, get smart. At the, that's what these journals are for. That's what pad and pencil's for. That's what taking notes is for. See if you can't increase your ability to comprehend ideas, information that can be life transforming. Don't miss the opportunity to learn. Take a good key phrase home, use it in your training. Don't be lazy in learning. Don't be casual in learning. Develop a whole new intensity for the 90s that you're not gonna miss the information. You're not gonna miss the stories. You're not gonna miss the details. Get smart. Here's a couple of parts to it. Number one, your own personal experience. Right? If you've had a bad week, just sit down and ponder that for a while. Study it. See if you can't pick up some ideas from a poor week and then make a better week. Okay? Learn from your own experiences. One way to learn to do it right is do it wrong. Do it wrong. I mean, you know, that's one way to learn to do it right. Do it wrong. Now, the key is don't let it take too long. <laughs> if you've done it wrong for a year, we suggest that's long enough. You don't need... Another year just to prove a point. No, one year is enough. Learn from your own experience, right? So the call didn't go well, all the stuff. Guess what they did when they finished that call? They made another call. What else could we do to make it better? How could we possibly improve? This is called the possibility for life change starts with education. Don't be lazy in learning. Don't be lazy in picking up the ideas. Don't be lazy in learning from your own experience. That's why you've heard from some people that have shared their testimonial here and given you some of their ideas, ways, and means of taking this product to the marketplace, making it work for you. We've devoted most of our time for that, and well, we should. Learning is the beginning of wealth. Learning is the beginning of life change. So education, get smart. Don't miss the training class. You say, well, I've already been to one of those classes. I've already heard it. I've got a good phrase for you to take home. That's no sign you got it. Just because you've listened to those millionaire tapes one time, it's no sign you've got it. I'm asking you to listen to them over and over and over. I'm asking you to dedicate yourself to a new level of learning in 1992. When I travel with Mark Hughes, he's got his book open. He's got a book open. He's reading. He's studying. Lives of successful people. Lives of despicable people. You know, study, learn, grow, change, develop. Never let it be said you didn't learn, right? If you want to solve your problems, you got to learn. If you want to take advantage of an opportunity, you got to learn. We can't come here and just give you the marketing plan, give you the product, send you home. We got to stay for a while. Learn, stay for a while, right? Put on those cassettes and stay for a while, right? We asked you to come here for a couple of days and stay for a while. Do some learning. Take it back home. So, number two, to have your best year ever, a good piece of that 400 million, make your dreams come true. Number one is get serious. Number two, get smart.
develop your own personal philosophy here. Philosophy, major determining factor in how your life works out. Each person's philosophy is like the set of the sail. The same wind blows on us all. The difference in where we arrive at the end of the week, at the end of the month, at the end of the year is not the wind that blows. And the wind is blowing around the world. The world is in solution. Things are a changing. The walls have come down. All kinds of things are happening. In Russia tonight, today, the winds are blowing. But what's going to make the major difference? Each person's personal philosophy that sets a better sail, sets a better sail. So don't ask for a more favorable wind. That's like wishing something that's not going to occur. Don't ask for better seed and soil. All you got's what's available. Don't curse what you got. On this planet, all we got's the seed that's here, the soil that's here, the miracle of life that's here, the opportunity that's here, the seasons that are here. That's all we got. Wherever you've come from in your country, the economy you got, that's all you got. In America, our economy, that's all we got. The government, that's all we got. The marketplace, that's all we got. Whatever you do, don't criticize all you got. The key is to set a better sail and turn what you've got into the miracle of your, of your future. Don't wish it was easier. Wish you were better. Don't wish for less problems. Wish for more skills. And that's the reason for coming here, spending a couple of days of intense effort, taking notes, rolling up your sleeves, going to work, commit yourself to learning so that you can get smarter for the days ahead. Develop your philosophy. Herbalife's philosophy has carried it now, these 12 years, to extraordinary heights. Those that do the work get the pay. A philosophy that commits itself to having the finest no matter what it costs. That kind of philosophy. I'm asking you to develop your own personal philosophy. Get your business philosophy going. Get your financial plan going. Don't violate the conclusions of your own philosophy by not executing and taking action. But that's number two, get smart. Here's number three, get going. As smart as you might become after these two days, as many ideas as you take away from here, they're truly, as Larry mentioned, like seeds to be planted in the soil. You gotta get going, you gotta take action. The disciplines is the miracle process. And here's how to get the miracle of your future going as far as disciplines are concerned. Number one, do what you can. You might go home and set a whole new pace for yourself and we call it cleaning up neglect. Should walk around the block, could walk around the block for your good health, don't walk around the block. See, you're on the wrong track. Should read, could read, don't read, on the wrong track. Should call, could call, don't call, on the wrong track. Could change, should change, don't change. You're on the wrong track. Letters you haven't written, conversations you haven't had with your family, somebody you should sit down with when you get back home, get that job done. Don't let neglect destroy your days, destroy your life, and destroy your future. Go back and do what you can. And if you'll do what you can, then life will give you some extraordinary things to do. We all pity the man, right? Wants to stride out of his house, go straighten out the corporation, has not yet straightened out his garage. You've got to take care of the small disciplines before life will give you a chance to handle the more complicated disciplines. How do you think Mark Hughes got here? Scattered now throughout 14, 15 countries, another 14, 15 coming up. I mean, how do you do this? You start first with the smallest of disciplines and do not neglect them and do not disregard them as being trifling. Everything matters. Everything's important. Good phrase to take home. All disciplines affect each other. In fact, here's a good philosophical phrase. If you hadn't thought of it before, here it is. Everything affects everything else. It's so easy to be casual and say, well, this doesn't matter. This doesn't matter. I'm telling you, everything matters. Of course, some things matter more than others, but there isn't anything that doesn't matter. Then here's the positive side. Every new discipline affects all your other disciplines. If you'll get some new things going, make some calls you've never made before, Step up your activity level. Step up your labor level. Develop the skills from these two days of training here. And you'll go home and work some miracles on your days and your life and your future and your income, your business. And a bigger portion of that 400 million will certainly be yours. Go for the disciplines, the smallest of disciplines, the least of disciplines. Like keeping your accounts in order. 
the smallest of disciplines. Did you ever hear this expression? I don't know where it all goes. Did you ever hear that? <laughs> I don't know where it all goes. Wow. Oh, we'd love to have you run Herbalife. You don't know where it all goes. How long do you think we'd last here in Herbalife? If that was your philosophy sitting at the top like Mark Hughes. Let me give you the story on Mark Hughes. Mark knows where everything goes. And he started back when he only had pennies. He started back when he only had dollars. He started back when he didn't have much. But here's the key. One of the greatest extraordinary phrases that's ever been written from antiquity says, if you'll be faithful, if you'll be disciplined when the amounts are small, we'll make you a ruler, give you a position of authority when the amounts are many. Somebody says, I've only got two or three distributors. I don't know where they are. Come on. If you've only got two or three, you can know when they get up. You can know when they go to bed. You can know all the details. Take care of your disciplines when the amounts are small. And then life will see to it that you get some extraordinary numbers to work with, like you saw the stories displayed here. Do not disregard the smallest of disciplines. Let us not neglect. Do not neglect the smallest of disciplines and build on that foundation and you can have everything you could possibly want. Okay? Get going. Here's number four. Get better. There isn't any of us that can't get better. So turn on this whole idea of personal development and personal growth. That was what my teacher shared with me that changed my life. Starting a few steps from here at that convention. I'm telling you, for things to get better, you got to get better. Don't ask for it to change out there. Ask for you to change here. Don't ask for a more favorable wind. We call that naive. Don't ask for better seed, better soil. This is the only planet you got. Just ask that you can get wiser and stronger and better. And be able to take care of your own responsibilities. Get better. Learn how to handle the seasons better. Let's go through them. Some stuff I did on satellite many, many years ago. Let me just review those notes for you on this getting better part. Learn how to handle the seasons of life. Number one, learn how to handle the winters. We're all going to go through some winters. Herbalife's been through a few. Just the winters of the calendar in the last 12 years. How many winters? About 12. But it's not just the winters of the calendar. It's not just the winters of the seasons. There's all kinds of winters. The winter when you can't figure it out, the winter when it all goes wrong, the winter when you have all kinds of hecklers on a telephone call, right? The winter when you get that first half dozen refunds, the winters of your life, social winters, political winters that we're going through around the world, okay? economic winters that a lot of people are experiencing these days, personal winters when your heart is smashed in a thousand pieces and the nights are unusually long. It is simply called winter time. But here's what you've got to do in your own personal development, your own personal growth, and that is just get better at handling the winters. You can't change the winter. You can't change the seasons, but you can change yourself. You say, well, what can I do about the upcoming winters of my life, the challenges that I know I'm gonna face? Here's what you can do. You can get wiser and stronger and better. Just make a list of that trio of words. Wiser, stronger, and better. Go home smarter than you came. Go home with more ideas than you came with. Next, get stronger. You can develop the muscle. You can develop the courage muscle. You can develop the inspiration muscle. You can develop the dedication muscle. You can get stronger. There isn't anybody here that can't get stronger. Next time we see you, may not even recognize you, how strong you're gonna be able to become in language, in style, in personality, the ability to cope, the ability to handle with anything that happens, no matter what happens. And the third one is get better. We can all get better. I've gotten better. Under getting better, I just wanna make you, make this list of four words. Four words. First, we talked about getting serious. Second, get smart. Third, get going. Fourth is get better. And here's four good words to take home. One is absorb. Develop the skill and the ability to absorb everything. 
be like a sponge like you've been today. This has been a good, serious group. I appreciate that. You've worked as hard as we have up here on this platform. You've rolled up your sleeve and you've gone to work and you've taken notes, and I appreciate that. Absorb everything you can. Absorb the sights and the sounds and the color. Guess what you're going to want to do? Go back home and invest this experience into other people's lives, and you can't invest it if you haven't got it. So I'm asking you to appreciate the color. I'm asking you to appreciate the auditorium. I'm asking you to appreciate what's going on here. I'm asking you to appreciate each other. Soak this all up. Soak it all up. It's called absorb, absorb, absorb. Then when you get back home, you can give out, give out, give out. And you'll have an extraordinary effect on the people that you reach out and touch. Here's the next one. Develop the ability to respond. That's what got me almost six years ago. Mark and Larry made that call. I responded. It touched me. The vision they gave me, the story they gave me, the pictures they painted, and the numbers they gave me, what we could do together, the team we could build, dominate the industry, walk head and shoulders above anything else that's out there, have an extraordinary adventure that's only been given to a few, a chance to walk the summit, got me, touched me. Now I'm asking you, however, not only to be touched with the summit numbers, the 400 million, I'm asking you to be touched with the smallest of people's challenges. Don't just be touched with the challenge, I'm asking you to be touched with the problem. Let people's problems get to you. Let people's problems touch your heart this year like never before. Be touched. Let life touch you. Don't let it kill you, but let it touch you. The problems that are out there, people struggling with their economy, struggling with their health, struggling with their future, I'm asking you to let that get around your heart. Let it do something to you. Don't go untouched. Don't go unmoved. When you walk out of here, open yourself up. Don't build up the walls. The same wall that keeps out disappointment keeps out happiness and opportunity. Take the walls down. Let yourself be touched by what's going on out there. Let sad things make you sad, as well as happy things make you happy. Let your heart get touched, and you'll have good hands then to take this product to the marketplace. Here's number three. Develop the ability to reflect. Long after this session is over. I'm asking you to go back over it one more time. I'm asking you at the end of the day, go back over your day. I'm asking you at the end of the week, go back over your week. Make that week more valuable. At the end of the month, go back over your month. At the end of a conversation, go back over the conversation. How did it go and what did you do? Learn by reflecting. I call it run the tapes again of your own experiences. And you say, why do that? Here's why. To develop the extraordinary ability to gather up the past and invest it in the future. What a next year you could have if you pay more attention this year, soak it up, gather it up, and reflect at certain times what's going on and what's happening, and this year will take a more powerful place in your experience. And then when you get ready to deliver in 1993, people will not believe the words you've chosen. They will not believe the heart and soul that you've mixed with words. They won't believe the power you've got. A few simple things here under getting better. Then here's the last one. And that's to share. We've got this extraordinary opportunity now. Let us not keep it. Let us share it. Let us reach out with a long reach, a strong reach, an unprecedented reach. Let us reach out and touch people not just with our opportunity. Let's touch people with our lives. Let's touch people with our experiences. Let's touch people with our heart and soul. Let's don't just touch people with a marketing plan and a distributor kit. Let's touch people with their health, yes. With an opportunity, yes. But here's a commitment I'd like to have you make to me. Let's help people with their lives, not just their health. Let's help people with their lives, not just their income. Let it be said if they were around us one week, one month, or a lifetime, that when they got around us, not only did we talk about money, not only did we talk about product, we talked about life. We talked about getting better. We talked about becoming all that you can become. We talked about picking up a challenge. We talked about not settling for less than you can possibly be. Let's do that. Let's develop those abilities. Now here's my last two parts to make this your best year ever. Get excited. And excitement is not just, you know, excitement. Excitement that runs deep is the excitement that really lasts for a lifetime, not surface excitement. There's been a lot of noise here, but what I really appreciate 
and feel is that this room is full of more than noise. It's full of more than sound. I'll tell you what's really going to serve you well, and that's the excitement you feel inside that isn't even probably expressed on the outside, the excitement that runs deep, the excitement that stirs commitment, the excitement that stirs courage. Give me the chance, and I will get the job done. That kind of excitement. Develop that kind of attitude. Get excited about your own skills. Get excited about your own abilities. You can put it into words. If I can start with nothing and finally stand on this platform, deliver best words I can choose, words are clumsy at best when you try to express what's going on in your heart, your head. But I've done my best, but I'm telling you, if I can find the words, you can find the words. And here's a key here. Communicate. Don't leave it unsaid. If somebody's got some congratulations coming, don't fail to congratulate them. If a distributor has got a word of praise coming, don't fail to give it. Don't fail to say it. Don't fail to say it. Find the best words you can. Struggle with the best words you can. Borrow some words if you have to. I borrow all kinds of words. Winston Churchill one time said, truth is incontrovertible. Malice may attack it and ignorance may deride it, but in the end, there it is. See, I love to borrow that. I mean, you know, that's better said than I could say it. See, that's well said. You could stay up all night and not think of that. I mean, that's well said. I'm asking you to borrow the words that have come from this platform. Borrow the words that have come from the top ten. Borrow the words that have come from the distributors who have shared so eloquently with you. Borrow their words. Borrow their notes. But then I'm asking you to start choosing the best words you can. We want you to get good at these skills of communicating, skills of touching people's lives with words, touching their heart with words, helping them to see something they've never been able to see before by your words. Choose the best words you can. Don't fail with an opportunity to challenge yourself to choose good words. Search for the words. Struggle for the words. But don't let somebody within the scope of your influence go without your words. Words work miracles. Words can help people to see something they've never seen before. There's a lot of people you haven't got to yet. They can't see how they can possibly be healthy. And if you'll come along with your good words, you can turn on all the lights for them. They can't see how they can possibly be successful. And if you'll come along with your testimonial, that's why Herbalife is built on testimonials. Words that work miracles help people to see. And when you come along and tell your story, people are going to say, before you got here, I was blind. And now that you've talked to me, I can see. I can see the possibilities. I can see the opportunity. I can see that if I take a hold of this thing, I can change my life. I can see it. I can see it. I can see it. I'm asking you, don't miss the chance to work miracles with your words. Get excited about your possibility to work miracles with words. And now here's my last word to you, and I'm finished for this day. But let me give you this last one to make this your best year ever. Get away. Get away, balance your life, take care of your family, take care of your responsibilities, take care of your spirituality, take care of good friendships. We've got to have some friends. That's why I'm here. I made these extraordinary friendships way back when. They've lasted all these years. Now got me an invitation to participate in something so extraordinary. This came about from a friendship. Now, I had the skills. Somebody says, well, you know, they offered you millions and a chance here just because you were friends. No, you don't just offer your friends millions. No, they got to have some skills. So I did bring skills, but I'm telling you, my chance to bring my gifts and my skills to you today was because I nourished these friendships over all these years. But here's the secret to my success. I stood up and did it again. I stood up and I did it again. And I did it again and I did it again all those many years ago. I did it when I was scared and I did it when I didn't want to and I did it when I was ill. And I did it when it didn't work well and I didn't did it when they didn't appreciate it. And I didn't a lot of times when I didn't know much what I was doing. I just did it anyway. And now all these years later, I'm asked to walk on this stage but the greatest introduction I've ever had, greatest response and welcome I've ever had, the greatest opportunity I've ever had to touch this many lives with a mixture of words and heart and soul, I got better. 
I got better day by day and week by week and month by month, and I'm asking you to do the same thing until you can develop a long arm and a long reach, until you can develop influence that won't quit. Touch people next year you couldn't touch this year. Touch people now you couldn't touch before. Conduct a meeting now you couldn't conduct before. Heart and soul now mixed in there that wasn't there, missing before. I'm asking all of you to get better in spite of the winters, in spite of the downturn, the money downturn, the social downturn, the personal downturn, whatever it is. Just get stronger, get better. We've all got those personal winters. We know what those are like. Barbara Streisand sings, it used to be so natural to talk about forever, but used to bees don't count anymore. They just lay on the floor till we sweep them away. You don't sing me love songs. You don't say you need me and you don't bring me flowers anymore. A winter song. But hey, we're acquainted with all those personal winters and all the rest of it. The key is not to wish for a better winter. The key is to wish for more strength, more wisdom, more courage, get better, get wiser, get stronger. Here's number two. Learn to take advantage of the spring. Spring means opportunity. And we've got a fresh spring going here. It's called a spring like no other. A spring, an opportunity like no other for you. But here's the clue. Spring is not a guarantee of a harvest in the fall, in the autumn, harvest time. Here's what you must learn to do. Underline the two words if you're taking notes. Take advantage. Take advantage of the spring. Don't just be faked out by the spring because the nice weather has come and looks like everything is going to be a lot better. The winter's finally passed. The spring is here. I'm telling you, that's not going to do it for you. Just because the spring is here, it's not going to do it for you. You got to seize it with your own two hands and take advantage. Read the books, study the tapes, go back through your notes, get ready to cash in on the spring. And now there's a sense of urgency here. Here's why. Spring doesn't last that long. To be able to say, I just got back, doesn't last that long. It's called the springtime of opportunity. Postpone a few things in the springtime, get the job done. Set aside a few things in the springtime, get the job done. Where I was raised in Idaho farm country, what if you asked a farmer to go bowling in the spring? What would he probably say? He would say, you're insane. You can go bowling in the winter. When you can't plant the crop, you can't go bowling in the spring, you've only got a certain piece of time and you got to get it done in that certain window of opportunity. And that's what we've got here, a window of opportunity. Let's take advantage of it. It's called take advantage of the spring. And there's also an urgency here. How many springs have you got in a lifetime? Not very many. Life is brief at the longest. The Beatles wrote, life is very short. And for John Lennon, it was extra short. For Michael Landon, it was extra short. But it is short. There's an urgency here. Don't waste your springs. Don't just let them pass, 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 hoping the time will pass. Take advantage. Last year, it was seize the moment. And I'm asking you now this season to seize the spring opportunity. You got a new organization going, seize the spring. You got a new distributor going, seize the spring. You've got a new life situation going. Seize the spring. Take advantage of it. Don't let it pass without giving it the best of your two hands and your attention. Number three, first, learn how to handle the winter. Second, take advantage of the spring. Number three, in the summer, learn to nourish and protect. We've got some major challenges now come summertime. One is to nourish our values, take care of them, feed them. Don't let them go hungry. Don't let them go wanting in nourishment and care. And then here's something else we've got to do in the summer. Defend ourselves against the enemies. Summertime is a unique time. It's a time of opportunity. It's also a time of challenge. But what else is new? It's what life is called. The last six and a half thousand years reads like this. Opportunity mixed with difficulty. Opportunity mixed with challenge. We've got a chance to grow like never before, but I'm telling you, there's going to be many enemies that's going to try to prevent us. As soon as you plant the garden, the busy bugs and the noxious weeds are out to take it, and you've got to learn not only to nourish your values, you've got to learn to do battle with your 
enemies. Whatever threatens you, I'm asking you to threaten it back. Take care of your responsibility, but don't take anything off of anybody. Somebody wants to destroy your chances for a good future by their negative talk, negative thinking, putting it all down, I'm telling you, walk away if you have to, walk away. Whatever threatens you, threaten it back. Whatever threatens your opportunity, threaten it back. Now, some of our enemies are on the outside, but here's the most important thing to understand. Some of our enemies are on the inside. Let me give you a quick list. Indifference. You got to do battle with your own indifference. Boy, it's easy to coast, especially if you've accomplished something, you know, extraordinary now. Somebody says, I got to relax. Here's the key. Not too long. The weeds will take all you plant if you rest too long. Don't rest too long. Indecision. You got to make those decisions. The ones that don't turn out to be good gives you experience to make better decisions. Don't let much time go by without making some decisions. The ones that you can make quickly, make them quickly. The ones that take time, take your time, but get those decisions made. Don't let indecision be an enemy, rob you of the future, empty your bank account, leave you with zero in the purse. Don't let that happen. The next one is doubt. Sure, there's doubts on the outside. People doubt that America's gonna make it. People doubt that Europe's gonna make it. People doubt that Russia's gonna make it, that Poland's gonna make it, that Czechoslovakia is gonna make it. They doubt the whole world is gonna make it. But I'm asking you not to pick up all those doubts. I'm asking you to have some faith, have some courage, believe, drive your doubts into a small corner. Don't let them loose like a mad dog, drive you into a small corner. Don't doubt the future. Don't doubt the possibilities. Don't doubt the extraordinary gifts that your distributors bring to your organization. Don't doubt that. And here's the most important one of all. Don't doubt yourself. If I've got miracle working power to change my life, so do you. If I've got the ability to change, so do you. If I've got the ability to read, so do you. If I can discover, so can you. If I can grow, you can grow. If I can develop, you can develop. If I can get an invitation like I got six years ago, help take something around the world, so can you. If I can stand on this platform, Idaho farm boy raising obscurity, so can you. If the millionaire team can do it, president's team can do it, walk off with the diamonds, the trophies, so can you. I'm asking you, don't sell yourself short. We haven't sold you short. That's why Mark, Larry, and Dr. Katzen and I have decided to invest a big share of our life these four days in being with all of you. If we didn't think you were worth it, we wouldn't have showed up. We don't need to conduct another meeting. We don't need to walk on another stage. We don't need to get up early like we get up. Don't need it, except for the challenge and the opportunity to invest in this many people's lives. Who wouldn't get up early? To have a chance to work miracles and invest in this many people's lives and help turn the world upside down for better nutrition called herbal life. Here's the next one, worry. I'm asking you to drive worry into a small corner. You gotta worry some. All this negative stuff serves serve some purpose. But the key is for you to be the master, not the servant. If it's two o'clock in the morning and your daughter's not home yet, best you worry. In New York City, if you step off the curb and one of those yellow taxis is coming, best you worry. But here's what I'm asking you to do. You be the master of worry. Drive it into a small corner, don't let it loose. And I'm asking you to go home with some new faith and some new courage. I'm asking you, don't worry. Drive it into a small corner. We've all got concerns and sometimes we all wonder and sometimes there's a little crack of doubt. We worry a little, but I'm telling you, drive it into a small corner. Drive your worries into a small corner. I promise you from this platform, the dedication of the executives that you've seen and the president's team members and the people that have walked off with one through 10, I'm telling you, we're all dedicated to help this Herbalife future that includes all of you be the most spectacular thing that's happened in the 90s. I promise you not to worry because you're in good hands. And now what I want you to be able to say, if you give Mark Hughes a telephone call, or if you have a chance to talk to Mark Hughes in person, whatever village you've come from, whatever street you've come from, wherever you've come from, I'd like for you to be able to say sincerely and honestly with all the dedication you possibly can, Mark, Hughes, I want you to go to bed at night and sleep like a baby because where I came from, when I go back and represent Herbalife in that community, I want to reassure you, Mark Hughes, Herbalife in that community is in good hands. I want some of you from Germany, 
get together, form a little coalition from Germany, after you've gotten out there and gotten your hands into it, and you've had a chance to work and labor for a while, send Mark Hughes a message and say, Mark Hughes, the distributors that have now joined forces in Germany, you can rest easy, Mark Hughes. In Germany, Herbalife is in good hands. And all of the rest of the countries, make that your dedication. Make it personally. Make it collectively as an organization. This incredible opportunity has been dropped in our lap. It's been given to us. We're going to take it to the marketplace, and we're going to take it to the marketplace with good hands, steady hands, growing hands, intelligent hands that can go touch people and get the job done. I'm asking you to commit to that. Herbal life is in good hands. Couple of more enemies of the mind you got to do battle with in the summer. One is pessimism that tries to get you only to see the negative side. Of course, there's the negative side. Life is part negative. What else is new? If the glass is half empty, it is half empty. You say, well, I've been only taught to see that it's half full. Well, sure, it's half full, but it's also half empty. I mean, can't you handle that? I mean, you know, that's not too difficult. But here's what pessimism would try to get you to do. Believe that it's only half empty. And when pessimism comes to your mind, you've got to educate pessimism because pessimism is stupid. <laughs> pessimism tries to get you to believe that it's only half empty. You've got to say, pessimism, you've never been to school. Too dumb and stupid to know. Of course it's half empty, but it's not only half empty. It's also half full. I'm asking you to be in charge. Be in charge of your own mind. Be in charge of your own destiny. Do battle with your enemy in the summertime. In the summertime, you've got to learn to love like a mother. Hate like a father. Give life like a mother. Nourish. Take life like a father. Father says to whatever threatens his family, take two or three more steps toward this family and threaten them, you'll cease to exist. I'm father. I kill. Do battle with your enemies. Now, it's also possible to love like a father and hate like a mother. I'm not saying that isn't possible. Nothing more dangerous than an angry mother. I saw an article in a magazine a little bit ago up in Canada. It showed a man with some claw marks on his back, had his shirt off, big teeth marks in his neck. This man was out in the woods, had his flash camera, saw a mama bear with a little cub, thought, though, this is cute, took a flash picture. Mama bear takes unkindly to this flash picture, promptly chases the man, catches him, almost kills him before somebody rescued him. So beware mama bear okay love like a father hate like a mother give life like a mother take life like a father or however you want to arrange it just so you nourish your values nourish your family nourish what's valuable for you nourish your organization nourish your distributors nourish your customers take care of your responsibilities feed nourish but then i'm also asking you to do battle with your enemies. Take sword to your enemies. Whatever's going to destroy those values, take sword to it. If it's worry, take sword to it. If it's threat, threaten back. You got to be like your bloodstream. Good illustration. Red corpuscles to nourish like a mother. White corpuscles to fight and kill like a father. You got to do some negative thinking and just think positive. Thank God for white corpuscles that think negative all day. White corpuscles say, just show me some infection, I'll kill it. Whatever threatens this body and its future gets threatened. Whatever's not to kill this body gets killed. I'm asking you, take sword to your enemies, whether they're on the outside or whether they're on the inside. Protect your family, protect your future, protect your values. Love, nourish, but also do battle with whatever's out there to do battle with you. Take some courage from some of those that have been through the battle. They've given you their stories on this stage. They've been through it. They know what it's all about. Take some courage from that. And in the summer, do battle and nourish. Now here's the last one in the harvest time, number four. Take your harvest and all that comes your way with full responsibility. Don't complain. That fourth season, complaining, I'm telling you, could ruin all of your chances. 
Complaining sometimes starts as an infection. If you don't take care of it, it becomes a disease. Do battle with it in the harvest time. Reap your harvest without complaint. It's your crop, you sowed it. You either made the calls or didn't make the calls. You wrote the letters, you didn't write the letters. You were steady or you weren't steady. You did it or you didn't do it. You put together a good day or you didn't put together a good day. Take responsibility when the harvest time finally comes and say, hey, it's my crop, gotta take responsibility for it. I do not complain. And then here's the next one, do not apologize if you've done well. We offer no apologies when these winners that walked across this stage here go back to their communities. We offer no apology for making the kind of money they make. Because of the lives they touched and the people that they helped, no telling what would have happened if these people had not touched many people's lives, who touched many people's lives. When you go back to the community, all of you that were winners here, I ask you to go back with no apology because you've done your job well and you've given good hands to everybody you've touched. You deserve all the money. Philosophy, as I taught the last time I was here, philosophy, in my personal opinion, is the major determining factor in how your life works out. Philosophy, the major determining factor in how your life works out. To form our philosophy, you gotta think, you gotta use your mind, you gotta process ideas, and this whole process over a lifetime, starting way back here when we were children, schools that we've attended, our parents, our experiences, all this stuff that we've processed by the thinking process helps to develop our philosophy. And in my opinion, each person's personal philosophy is the major factor in how your life works out. Here's what I called it in that last presentation when I was here. It's called the set of the sail. Each person's personal philosophy is like the set of the sail. Now, I used to think it was circumstances that ordered my life. If someone would have asked me at age 25, Mr. Owen, how come you're not doing well? Pennies in your pocket, creditors calling, nothing in the bank, behind on your promises to your family. You live in America, 25 years old, got a beautiful family, every reason to do well, and things are not going that well for you. What is wrong here? It would not have occurred to me to blame my philosophy. I mean, it would not have occurred to me. Saying, well, I got this lousy philosophy and that's how come I got pennies in my pocket and nothing in the bank and things aren't working well. That would not have occurred to me. I found it much easier to blame the government. Much easier to blame the tax problem. I used to say taxes are too high. Top tax rate when I first started paying taxes, 91%. Back then, when your income reached a certain level, all your income over that, 91%. So I used to say that's too high. Now the tax, top tax rate's about 33%. But people are still saying what? Taxes are too? See, but you can't use that anymore. If it's gone from 91 to 33, how could it be too high? Come on. I threw all that old excuse stuff away. Some people found it though, and they're <laughs> using it these days. My old list. I used to blame the traffic, the weather, used to blame circumstances, right? People say, I'm too, t too tall, I'm too short, I'm too old. I was raised in obscurity, raised on a farm, parents of modest means, all the stuff. If you were to ask me, how come you find yourself here, Mr. Rohn, age 25, living in America, land of abundance and opportunity, pennies, zero in the bank, not doing well, creditors calling, it would not have occurred to me to blame my philosophy. I found it easier to blame the company, company policy. I used to say, if this is all they pay, how do they expect you to do well? So I figured that, you know, my future was going to be tied to what everybody else was arranging, the economy and, right, interest rates. I used to say things cost too much. That was my whole explanation, not my philosophy, until my teacher taught me better that this is where the problem was, my own personal philosophy. Here's what's exciting about each person's personal philosophy. That's what makes us different than dogs and animals and birds and cats and spiders and alligators. That's what makes us different than all other life forms. The ability to think, the ability to use your mind, the ability to process ideas and not just operate by instinct. In the winter, I'm telling you, the goose can only fly south. What if south doesn't look too good? Tough luck. It can only fly south. But see, human beings are not like a goose, can only fly south. I mean, you can turn around, go north, you can go east, you can go west, you can order 
the entire process of your own life. And we do that by the way we think. We do that by exercising our mind. We do that by processing ideas and come up with a better philosophy, a better strategy for our life, goals for the future, okay? Plans to achieve those goals. All this comes from developing our philosophy. Philosophy helps us to process what's available. Well, when we get here, we got seed and we got soil and we got some rain and we've got some what? Sunshine and we've got some seasons and what? The miracle of life. Now the key is, what do you do with all this stuff? How do you turn all this stuff that's available here into equity and promise and lifestyle and dreams and future possibilities. All of this that's possible now with human beings, how do you take all this stuff and turn it into this equities and values? Well, it starts with philosophy. What is the seed? What is the soil? What is the sunshine? What is the rain? Is it possible to take some of each of all the stuff that's available and turn it into food and turn it into value and turn it into nourishment, turn it into something spectacular and unique that no other life form can do? And the answer is yes. But you cannot deal with all this stuff and what to do with it unless you start refining your philosophy. Think, use your mind, come up with ideas and strengthen your philosophy. So the seed and the soil and the rain and the sunshine, this is called, you know, the economy and the banks and the money and the schools and uh, everything that's available out there, processing information, what to do with all that and turn it into equity and value. That is the major challenge of life, my personal opinion. So each person's personal philosophy now is going to determine what you're going to do with seed and soil and sunshine and rain, and miracle, the change of seasons. That's it. My personal opinion. Each person's personal philosophy is like the set of the sail. That's what this seminar is for today help you to trim a better sale. You don't need a better economy. You don't need better seed and soil. In fact, when it comes to seed and soil and rain and sunshine and seasons and the miracle of life, that's all you got. Now, what if you blame this stuff? Then you're blaming all you got. Guess what I want people to say? I heard him 10 years ago, but you should hear him now. I'm telling you the man works on his craft. I'm telling you the man's done some extra reading. I'm telling you the man doesn't miss a trick. I'm telling you, he's worked hard on himself. That's why he's able to deliver like he does. The same thing can happen for you as a teenager. It can happen to you as a mother, as a father, as a business person, as a salesperson, running a business. Doesn't matter. Management, wherever you find yourself. This is the process called personal change. And what I say to start with is start with your own philosophy. Your philosophy is going to determine whether or not you go for the disciplines or continue the errors that's called potential disaster. And everybody has it within their power. 